In this video, we're going to be looking at shooting day for night and some of the ways we can use daylight for getting there. We'll also be taking a look at how to handle this approach in post, with some tips on how to colour grade your footage for this technique. A lot of night shots, if not motivated by artificial lighting, for example street lights and house lights, will be lit with the motivation of some sort of moonlight. A night shot will be heavy on dark shadows and minimal on fill light. So first of all, let's take a look at moonlight and the quality of light that it produces. We can look at the moon simply as a big white reflector, bouncing light from the sun. The size of this bounce light source relative to us is pretty small, so we should be expecting the light quality the moon produces to be quite hard. If we take a look at this image, captured during a full moon, we can see from our shadows that our moonlight is a pretty hard light source. Here's a more detailed look. You can see how the quality of light cast by the moon is actually not too dissimilar to the quality of light that the sun produces. In fact, to take a better look at this, let's adjust the colour temperature and exposure on our previous image. We just want to look at the quality of light here, so we'll crop out the sky. You can see this now actually looks somewhat like sunlight. However, one difference between the moon on a cloudless night and the sun on a clear day is fill light. The moon is surrounded by the darkness of the sky. If something is lit only by moonlight, there wouldn't be fill light from anywhere else making our shadows extremely dark, just like in our image. Daylight on a clear day also involves scattered light around the Earth's atmosphere, which adds a lot of extra light from all directions. So on a clear day, we actually have a lot of fill light, as well as our hard source from the sun. Looking back to our previous picture, we can emulate this by pushing up our shadows. This looks a fair bit more like real sunlight now, even though it was actually taken under a full moon. So if we can make moonlight look like sunlight, we should be able to make sunlight look like moonlight. Here's the same location lit by sunlight during the day. Let's adjust the colour temperature and exposure to get us back to a night look. Side by side, these images really don't look much different to one another. If you glanced at both images, you wouldn't instantly be able to tell which is which. One thing to note here is that shadows are very important when conveying a nighttime look. If we shot a sunlit scene without many shadows, the day for night look will be overlit and it will be fairly obvious that the shot was taken during the day under the sun. You also need to take into account where the sun is in the sky. In the summer, the sun will be higher in the sky and the light will be harsher, whereas a winter sun will be lower and a bit softer. An evening sun will also be lower in the sky and a bit softer. So now we know the basics, let's add some people into the mix. To get a believable moonlit look from the sun, we want to focus on using the sun as a backlight and breaking up the light using our environment. In this way, it's actually not too dissimilar to lighting a normal daylight scene with a hard light source. Let's take a look at using the sun as a backlight. Pretending that the sun is our moon, we can backlight our talent, as well as providing backlight to certain points in the background, making for a more interesting frame, and showing that our moonlight is lighting a vast area. We've also made sure that shadows make up a good part of our image. But, as we grade down our image for the night look, our talent falls to darkness. To further emphasise the specular highlight quality of real moonlight and add some light back onto our talent's face, we'll add in a silver reflector. You could also use a white reflector or lighting unit here. How you reflect the light is up to you but importance should be placed on the amount of shadows in your image, as the play between deep shadows and touches of light are going to be the main draw in creating a convincing night shot. 
Let's take a look at using our environment to break up sunlight for the night look. Locations with lots of trees and woodland are a great option for this, as we can find areas where the sun is shining through the leaves and branches, creating patterned shadows and breaking the light up in a pleasing way. Look out for spots with a good amount of shadows. As we covered earlier, deep shadows play a big part in getting this to look like nighttime. You can see how well this sort of lighting works for conveying a nighttime, moonlit look. By carefully choosing how much light and shadow appear in the background and on our talent, we created an interesting, cinematic and believable image. So we've taken a look at creating moonlit scenes, day for night, with clear skies. So what about cloudy nights? Let's quickly go back to comparing the quality of our daytime light and our nighttime light, this time between a cloudy day and a cloudy night. As you might have guessed, they're not so different to one another. Can you tell which is which? Once again, we can make them look like each other in a believable way. The sun is being heavily diffused by the clouds, as is the moon. Lighting people day for night in cloudy conditions is slightly different, but still achievable. As our lighting is much more soft and diffused, we have a lack of defined shadows, which means our image is going to be a lot flatter. If we turn down our exposure and cool off our image, trying to darken our shadows to make our night scene more believable, we end up with something that looks more like late evening. There's nothing wrong with this, but it doesn't look as dark as we'd like it to. Now generally, when trying to add shape to our light on a cloudy day, we may use negative fill to take some light away. However, the lit side of our talent's face would only be as bright as our background, and they wouldn't stand out as much as we'd like. A simple solution to this would be to do the opposite, add light in. Now we can easily take down our exposure without losing any in our talent's face, and we also keep our light a lot more shaped. It's best to use a soft light source for this to complement the soft lighting we already have in the scene. An important thing to think about here is your background. If you have a dark background, it will go extremely dark when you take your exposure down. If you have some lighter elements to your background, these will still be somewhat visible. You may need to have a think about how you want your background to look, as well as experimenting with lighting ratios. One important thing to note before diving into the colour grade is exposure. While shooting in bright, sunny conditions, you never want to overexpose any of the highlights in your image. This will be a dead giveaway that you shot in sunlight. Be careful when exposing, and make use of zebras and other exposure tools to make sure that you're not accidentally overexposing anything in your frame. Let's jump into DaVinci Resolve to check out how we can grade a day for night clip. There's a few different ways you can do this. In this case, we shot in our camera's RAW format to take advantage of the added control over our image. For our main exposure, contrast and saturation adjustments, we're going to directly use the RAW tab. We can think about the RAW controls as a way of affecting how we actually shot the image, rather than a post-colour grading adjustment. So if we take our shadows right down, we're essentially pretending that this was the way the scene looked when we shot it. Raw controls are very handy for things like this. On top of this, we'll also be using a basic serial node structure to make our steps easier to follow. To note, all of the adjustments we do make in our raw tab can easily be replicated on nodes, if need be. First of all, Let's get a basic grade on our clip. To make things a bit easier to demonstrate, we're just going to use Film Convert for this. We'll get rid of any added grain, and select our camera make, model, and the profile we shot our clip in. We'll stick with the Kodak 5207 Vision 3 stock for this. Film Convert has already added in a good amount of contrast, which is important for this look. If need be, you can add some more contrast to the image, but here we're looking pretty good. Heading down to our raw controls, we'll drop down our shadows a little.
Our image is now pretty dark, but we have enough highlights shaping our model and parts of our background to not seem overlit. Let's add a node for our next adjustment. If we take a look at our model's hair, it seems a little too saturated for the night look. So we'll come down to our hue versus saturation curve to desaturate this a little. We'll select our hair and pull the saturation down to a suitable level. As we've desaturated the reds, we've also lost some saturation in the face. We could track the hair, but it probably won't work as well as we'd like due to the darkness of the image. There aren't any other reds in our background. So we'll go to power windows, make a selection of the face, track it, and then invert our selection. This keeps our face from being desaturated. When shooting day for night, it's a good idea to be careful about things like vibrant colours, especially with warmer tones, as it can end up increasing the amount of post-colour work you need to do. We'll add another node to tweak our background colours slightly. Here, we'll use a combination of hue versus hue, and hue versus saturation to cool off the greenery in the background and make it a little less vibrant. In our final node, we'll add some blue into our gamma and lift making our mids and shadows a little cooler. From here, we can add a few tweaks to get our final image to where we want it. In this case, we went back into Film Convert to adjust our film stock's saturation and tint to pump a little more colour into our skin tones and take away a little bit of the purple tint. If we disable and enable our nodes, you can see how our image has changed, and how the steps we took grading this turned it into a darker, nighttime look, whilst retaining a nice amount of colour. Let's have a look at a slightly different grade. We'll add our film stock emulation again as our initial grade. This time, we'll use our raw tab to drop the color temperature right down to 2000 Kelvin. We'll then take down our shadows and exposure, similar to what we did in the previous grade. You can also adjust your tint slightly if your image is leaning a bit too far on green or purple. Right now, our image is looking pretty blue. Let's take our saturation down so we can push a more silvery look into our moonlight. If your highlights need pushing up a little, you can do this also. Small adjustments like this you can just make on the fly. We'll add a new node. and push some warmer colours into our gamma and gain, further emphasising the silvery moonlit look.
In our next node, we'll select and single out our skin tones using a combination of the qualifier tool and a power window. Then we'll push a little bit of warmth back into them. We don't need to go too far here at all. When you're going for a stylistic look like this, skin tones don't always have to be completely accurate and can actually be distracting if they don't match up with the overall scene. For our third look, we'll go for something a bit more stylistically cooler in colour. Let's get rid of our skin tone adjustments and the slight warmth we added to the image previously. We'll then add a luminosity versus saturation adjustment to tidy up our shadows a little by taking a little bit of blue out of them. To further this blue look, we can select our greenery in the background using the qualifier and push the colours further towards blue. You can see how this creates a more stylistically blue moonlight compared to our other two grades. We could even push this a little further by adding some more blues into our gamma and gain. For further adjustment, the overall saturation can be lowered or raised to taste. You can see with our fourth and final grade, we've turned the colour palette in this image completely toward blue for a very stylistic night look. Let's take a quick look through these four grades. You can see how we've graded out four different looks and maintained our nighttime feel in the image. The way you colour your image is more of a stylistic choice. The important thing is to make sure that you have plenty of deep shadows in your image, with your highlight shape in the background and talent. Overall, day for night is a great way to achieve night shots when you're restricted by time or budget. And with a little bit of planning, you'll be able to get shots that convey the nighttime look to your audience, whilst fitting the mood and style of the work 